The following screencast will provide a demonstration of Acknowledge's Find Cycle Peak Detector. This is part six in the series and this particular screencast will demonstrate the clustering output option. As we've seen with the previous casts, the Find Cycle Peak Detector has many uses and this particular feature, the clustering output, allows you to take advantage of yet another piece of the um, cycle detector functionality. Clustering allows you to locate or, or divide your data into groups and the clustering of the groups is learnt within the software. The algorithm being used is a k-means cluster algorithm and the software will allow you to select the number of groups that you want to break your data down to. Now it's important that you have some concept of the number of groups in order to get sensible data out of it. And I'm going to use this ECG file to give a good demonstration of how the clustering works. If we look at this signal or this file there are actually two signals here. The top signal, top channel, the red signal, this is an ECG waveform and the bottom signal down below is the heart rate taken from this ECG channel. And the first thing you'll notice there are some arrhythmias in there. When we go back and compress everything down, <clears throat> we can see that the heart rate is suddenly jumping very high in portions of the data, and then it's actually dropping down quite low in other areas. Normally when you look at a file like this, you tend to think that there's some kind of noise or artifact that's causing the problem. But in this case, <clears throat> this is actually a true reflection of the subject's heart rate. So you can see the heart rate's bouncing along quite normally here, and then, bam, there you can see the two R waves much closer together, and the heart rate increases as reflected in the rate calculation here. And then you see there's a drop before resuming to a more typical heart rate, and then again, jumping up, dropping down, so on and so forth. And here we can see the heart rate is dropping down. So this is actually a true reflection of the subject's heart rate during this recording of the data. Now I'm going to use this file to try and identify these different events. And I'm going to the Find Cycle Peak Detector cluster output to cluster or group the ECG waveforms into three different groups. The more typical data that we would see around here, which is about 60 beats per minute, uh, as one group. The second group, the higher, the sort of arrhythmia data where the heart rate is or the r to r interval is much shorter. And then the third group being the interval or the longer interval caused um, by the arrhythmia. So we'll end up with three um, groups and then the software will go through and label each ECG waveform with the associated cluster group number. Okay, to start the analysis, we have to launch the we have to launch the Fine Cycle Peak Detector um, feature, and from the toolbar, we go to the shortcut. And I have channel one, the ECG channel, selected as my waveform. I'm going to find the peaks of the ECG. <clears throat> I'm using a threshold of about 1.25 millivolts, which seems like it's picking them out quite nicely. We can see how the display has been updated going from peak to peak. I'm going to go from the previous peak to the next peak. 
and now we have a good view of the, the peak detection working. And then under the output tab, there's the clustering option. The clustering section allows you to create a series of presets. So once you've defined your criteria and have everything set up, you can create a new preset, and then you never have to worry about that again. Um, the software needs to know which source channel you're going to use. So again, we're using channel one. It's asking us for the number of clusters. As I mentioned previously, I'm going to use three clusters for this, three different groups. <clears throat> and I'm going to let the software uh, identify the cluster centers by learning. And it usually does a pretty good job. It is possible to remove any outliers, but for this particular set of data, I actually want to include everything. But if you check the option here, you can then set the criteria for removing any flyers that exist within the data. If we come over to our tabs, the first thing you have to do is set the criteria. And I'm going to use um, two criteria for this. The first one is going to be the segment width. And then by adding, and the segment width in this case is going to be the Artois interval. <clears throat> and then I'm going to add the R wave amplitude. So I've got two criteria that the software is going to look for. And my output, I'm going to show a 2D um, criteria scatter plot. And then I want to show, and I'm going to generate the cluster events. And there's an option down here to show the cluster assignment as a new channel in the graph. Now we've made the appropriate selections, we're going to find all cycles. Now what the software has done is created this new plot, and if I resize my windows, can have a better look. Let's have a look. Okay, so on the right, we now have our data plotted into three groups. The <clears throat> um, amplitude of the R wave is running across the bottom. So we can see one and a quarter millivolts up to two and a quarter millivolts. And then the width of the interval or segment width in the opposite direction. One of the nice things about the software is that we have this jump tool. So we can select an event over here and it will jump us to that point in the data. But before we get to that, I'm going to zoom in on our original data and we can see that the software has put event marks on each of the R waves with the grouping so these are all considered group twos or cluster twos this one here is considered a and here's a faster one over here a shorter interval cluster one again if I compress down this channel here displays where those ones, twos, and threes occur. So if we zoom in just down here, there's a three going high, and there's a one going low, and then two is through the middle. You know, if I want to look at this event over here, which is a, a group two, but it's got a, a high R wave, click over here and the software marks it and it places the data right at the beginning of the uh, file. So we can see <clears throat> this is that high R wave right there. And if I jump to this event over here just by clicking on it, 
we can see that, and again, if I just move this across a little bit. Yeah, that's not a good example. That was right at the beginning. Let's try this one here. There we go. If I just scroll across a little bit. So we can see where it's picking these out. It's another three. Now down here. There's a one, come all the way out here. So this is a relatively high amplitude R wave group one. There we go. So anywhere in our set we can jump to. I want to jump to this one right here. There it is. So the this is how the software has determined our ECG waveforms fall based on the criteria that cri criteria that we used, which was the the segment width, so in other words, from one peak to the next, and the amplitude of the R wave. And then back over here, we then have this graphed out as a new channel. Now, of course, using the fine cycle peak detector, it's also possible to use the peak detector to locate all the group 1, group 2, and group 3 for further analysis. But this is just a very convenient way of being able to identify the different groups within your data set. And of course, you can use different criteria. If we go back into the detector <clears throat> and we go to our criteria, there's a whole subset of options you can use, including any measurements that you've got enabled in the software. So the ability to group them is really quite nice. And then your output. There are a number of additional options there. If you have three different criteria selected, you can do a 3D scatter plot. Um, you can generate training sets of events so you can play around with the criteria for actually determining the groups. Um, paste your mes measurements down into the journal. Um, show the criteria values as channels in the graph and then you can do the same with uh, into Excel as well. Anyway that concludes our demonstration of the find peak cycle detector clustering output option.